Hi guys, it's Antoinette the Confident Woman and welcome back to my channel where we discuss all things relating to confident living and welcome to the second instalment of The Scoop. Now the last episode I asked you guys if you wanted me to include special guests and I had the opportunity to interview June Sarpong, have a little sit down chat with her and um, I had written up my list of questions like I was going to ask her quite a lot of things in relation to confident living and society and how we can live our lives out loud, stuff like that. And then I got my hand on her book, Diversify, and I was reading it and I thought to myself, wow, a lot of my questions are in line with or based upon a lot of stuff that she spoke about in the book. And I turned to my husband and I was like, you know what? I have to base this interview on her book. And you know how I am already. If I think there's a really good book or I've read a book and I like it, I will let you guys know. And I think this book is something that is very much needed for society, for everyone at a time like this. It couldn't have come at a better time. So I based this interview on the book and I've kind of edited bits of it um, for the scoop. Um, hopefully you can pick one or two things that can help you and I hope you enjoy it so grab your beverage um, sit down relax it's not too long and enjoy my second installment of The Scoop Hi guys, it's Antoinette and welcome back to another segment of The Scoop. And today I have a very special guest, broadcaster, presenter and author, June Sarpong. And I'm going to be talking about a couple of issues relating to society today. She's written a book, Diversify, which I feel that you all have to get your hands on. It's a very well written book and it's it's amazing in simple terms it's amazing <laughs> so june welcome thank, thank you, you so Antoinette. much for taking time out of your busy schedule for this <laughs> thank I know you for having me your book, but yeah i'm just going to go straight into it and mm. ask you a couple of questions linked to your book okay um i'm loving that we've both got the curls but i know I'm, right and look we at this, this. <laughs> <laughs> so, darling yes um in the challenge your asian section of your book um did you do the test? Have you been on the website? Yes, I have. Uh, we will okay. see about this later. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I, you, in your book, mm. I didn't feel that I had prejudice okay. naturally. Yes. And as I was going along, it makes you question certain things like, wow, I didn't know that I thought like this. Yeah. And, you know, I don't know if I'm making sense. Yeah, yeah I get it. Because so it happened to me. Yeah. yeah. So... It, it's something that I think everyone should do because a lot of us don't actually understand or yes. feel that we are prejudiced. But yeah. when we get to the stage where we recognise that, it's like looking in the mirror. It's like wow, looking in the mirror. This, this yes. is me. And yes. if I'm thinking like this... Why should I be surprised that someone else else's? Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So um, you mentioned something very pivotal. Mm. You said, let me quote it so I don't like... Yeah. You said, isms require both parties to subscribe to the stereotype. Yeah. It takes one party to apply the label, but it can only hold relevance if the other side accepts the label. Yeah. Now, with a lot of the young people and young adults that I'm working with, mm. they are accepting the label. Mm. It's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah. They don't feel like they can aspire too much because they're like, well, if society and everyone else thinks of me this way, why should I? In not too many words, how can you how can they practically move away or shift from that mindset, would you suggest? That's a wonderful question, Antoinette. Um, and oh, a tough one for you to start <laughs> with. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> just, just went straight yeah, in. Yeah, before we talk yeah. lipstick and blusher, <laughs> no. uh, just went straight into society. <laughs> Sorry, um, guys. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, I think the first thing we have to do is we have to be honest. Mm. So if we're looking at the labels, those labels do exist. And unfortunately, the way society is set up, the majority have been conditioned to think that way about certain sectors mm, of society. Mm, so let's not pretend it doesn't exist. It's mm, not in these kids' heads. It's yeah. real. But at the same time, with anything, things can change. And you can change people's thinking. So I think what these kids must remember is, the, is how powerful they are. They shouldn't feel that they are powerless mm. because actually, if they begin to act against the status quo and if they begin to act 
uh, in contradiction to how they've been uh, perceived for so, so long, long, then invariably somebody will change, somebody yeah. will shift. So yeah. even if you come across 20 people who treat you in that way, and my God, it's, it wears you down, <sighs> it's exhausting, yeah. Yeah. there will be one. Okay. And sometimes you have to hold out for that one that's going to give you a chance. Yeah. Otherwise, what's the point? Mm. And if you think, particularly for those of us who are children of immigrants, mm -hmm. and you think about the sacrifice our okay. parents made to be here, it cannot have been in vain. If that's the case, they should have stayed where they were. Yeah. If their kids are going to be in prison yeah. or uh, involved in knife crime or you know high rates of teenage pregnancy, whatever it is. Um, and so to me, I think it's really important that we raise the aspiration of our young people, mm -hmm. but we also prepare them for the reality of what they'll be coming up against. Okay, moving on, on that, what aspires you and what pushes you so when you come across an obstacle mm. i.e that yeah. what kind of pushes you personally to like look past that yeah well the first thing is i no longer take it personally because it's not okay. about me it's not about you it's about a system okay. and it's about what whatever form of discrimination you come mm. up against uh what you represent to that system so we've all been conditioned to have a view of who we think should lead and who mm. we think should follow and often uh, in most societies, particularly in most Western societies, the idea of who should lead uh, is an elite white male. And, and then there's a sort of pecking order of who should follow. follow. And so it's really uh, important to not take discrimination personally. And it's very hard not to because it hurts. But when you understand it's not you, if it was mm. you, if it was me, it would be the same. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. And the only thing that actually changes it is usually how you behave. Okay. So usually the thing that changes that form of discrimination is how the person who is on the receiving end behaves to shift it because they don't accept it. So it's in the same okay. way if you would naturally talk down to somebody with Down syndrome mm. in a belittling way. Mm. If they were to answer you in a way that made you question what you've just done, it would Inch. move you in your tracks, you mm. see what I mean? And it would make you realize, oh, hang on a minute, in, in terms of something that you'd normally just do without even thinking. So mm. I think, and it's not right that the onus is on, on us, as it were, but I do think it's important yeah. to arm our kids uh, with, with the self-esteem and the confidence that they need and to keep drumming it in because you do have to keep drumming it in because it's constantly being um, worn down and drained out. Mm. So how important do you think it is for them to look at politics as important? In, because oh a lot of them, mm. a lot of young people mm. feel like I don't need to say anything because for instance, my vote doesn't count. Oh, yes, it's not it going to change anything. What, it's what, kind of linked back to my first question, but yes. why is politics so, so important, important. And now? Yes, well, it's so important. And actually, I think what's so wonderful uh, is a demonstration that happened for them just a couple of weeks ago with Stormzy at the Brits. Yeah. You know, yeah. the fact that a grime artist mm -hmm. calls out the Prime, Prime Minister, Minister at a music performance mm. and then she has to respond. She doesn't even always respond <laughs> to Jeremy Corbyn. I mean, <laughs> and then she has to respond. Yeah. And then you, when he triggered uh, the uh, petition, so now this is going to be, Grenfell is going to be debated in the Commons. That just shows you the power. power. And it mm. wasn't old people supporting Stormzy, it was his young supporters. Mm. So those same people, if they take that to the ballot box, which we saw actually in the last election in terms of how Jeremy yeah. Corbyn um, uh, performed with, uh, with the young youth folk, if they take that to uh, the ballot box, I think they'll be surprised by the impact. And I think that's what we want to see. Okay. And then they can hold their politicians to account. Oh, very good point. Mm. I like that. So, yeah. moving on to part two of your book. Yeah. Um, you spoke about It's a Girl. Well, under the title, there was a quote, It's a Girl. Yeah. And as soon as I saw it, I started laughing yeah. because I thought the same thing when I had my daughter. Like, does she have to go through the same challenges I went through, like going up the career ladder, especially being a black woman yes, in Britain. In, in Britain. Mm -hmm. And you brought out a, quite a lot of points, but what I want to hone on is 
do you think anything's really going to change as drastically as we need it to? Um, well, I think because you're her mother, she won't. So there are going to be uh, obstacles that you will overcome and dragons that you will slay, which will mean that she doesn't have to experience the stuff that you experience. Secondly, I do think with each generation, each generation is better than the previous, you know, in terms of how they think on these issues. If you look at how millennials think, uh, v, uh, Generation X, V, the generation before that, mm. I think millennials and now Generation Z are much more progressive. So definitely things will be easier for your daughter, but there's still a long way to go. But on the front of equality, looking at equality, yeah. and especially in the system that we have set yeah, up, yeah. do you think? Yeah, because it's still moving in the right direction. So if you look at how things were for the previous generation, and if you look at the fact that we're having these conversations around me too, time's up, the pay gap, things that people wouldn't even discuss Plus before, before. Okay. and now being brought to the forefront. So I think definitely it will be better. So in her. summary, do you think these discussions are helpful? helpful? Yeah. Yeah, I think they're helpful and I think they are so important. Okay, and how important do you think it is for people to be open and transparent with what they're going through personally? Mm. How is that going to help them to get to the stage where they can look at life from a different perspective. Yeah, I think it's important to be open and transparent, but I think it's also important to find a support system. Okay. So if you are uh, talking about what you're going through, make sure you're talking about it to the right people. Make sure you're talking about it to people who will actually want to support you and nurture you and help you to progress. Sometimes you give your information to the wrong people who might actually make it worse. Okay. So it's about mm. being discerning yeah. in terms of who it's you easy. share your vulnerabilities with. Okay. Well, thank you so much, June Safong. We really appreciate and it. And Jeanette, thank you for all that you do. So, mm. yeah, no, it's wonderful. I'm so glad to have been able to join you on the sofa. And guys, you need to pick up this book. Get your hands on a copy. I have a signed copy for someone, so I'll be giving you more information on how you can win that. But once again, guys, remember, it's one step at a time to becoming confident. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Bye yes. for now. Bye.